Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Sunday night at the Briar, Sunday night in our bubbles. Colleen, question for you. Night. Was that Wayne Madaw in the opening with the straw broom in the, <laughs> no, it's not. I just was curious. Well, you never know. We had to go deep into the archives tonight, didn't we, for tonight's show? We've gone, I love going deep into our archives. I just love it, but that's for later. That's for later. This has been so exciting today again, hasn't it? There's been so much sort of ups and downs and sometimes we're seeing a little bit of rust still. Yeah, you, you and I were talking, you and you, we were chatting about uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Why didn't they play this shot over that shot? We were talking about the finish to Grattan and Botcher and uh, deciding to hit over playing the freeze. And I think we settled on the fact that they still seem a little unsure about the ice right now. And the slide path and all of that and how hard is the perfect freeze to make. We could rename this armchair quarterback this show because you and I are always doing a lot of that mm. as we're watching curling. Well, no, but I'm I'm still undefeated from here. Yes. And I am perfect as well now, unlike my real playing career. Uh, but anyway, it was just interesting to watch uh, the, the Grattan Botcher game. But we'll have James on after, so we're going to be able to ask him. Hey. We, will, we will ask him. And of course, uh, Northwest Territories giving Brad Jacobs all they could handle this afternoon. So, you know, we talk about free spaces on the bingo card and sometimes yeah. that's not the case at the Briar, right? Well, no, they certainly played them tough, which was, you know, which was nice to see. And, uh, you know, I think it was uh, Jamie Cooey who said that team's got some players on it and they can play. So, you know, they made enough shots today to make it really interesting against Brad Jacobs. Jacobs, of course, won, but I'm sure he had a few nervous moments early in that game because they were, what, down 4-2 after 5, I think. That's it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, this is the longest we've gone into the show without you starting with a board. Oh, are you missing them already? Which one would you like? I'm going to save them. I don't know how many you have. How, how many are you up to at this I've point? Only got the, I've only got the three, but... You know, if you insist, Devin, I will bring in because um, Ontario's coming on with uh, Wayne Madaw. We're calling them the Midward. The Midward. That one. So it's Madaw and the end of Howard, just for those. And here are the little few standings. There you go. But look at all those two and ones in Pool A. Yep. And yep. guess who's got to play still most of them? Uh, Midward. I I did ask you, you were, you were doing the rock curls. Uh, any soreness today? No, it's easy for me. I rock curl all the time. Look, well, while you start talking, I just pick it up and start rock curling. Oh, W. <laughs> just kidding. All right. <laughs> this long. That was last night. Oh, man. All right. We're having fun tonight. We hope all of you, wherever you're tuning in tonight, are having a lot of fun. And you know who else was having fun today? Glenn Howard, Wayne Madaw. Uh, of course, Glenn coming into the game because they were smoking uh, Yukon. And so Glenn got a chance to come into the game. Yeah. Uh, Colleen, we have some of that video. It was so fun to see the two of them. We'll get into it. But let's take a look at the video of how much fun they were having on the ice this afternoon. Well, he has an opportunity for four in this end, Vic. The final freeze attempt just bouncing off a little bit. So it is open. His uh, first Briar appearance since 13. You're good, you're good, you're good. And there they are. One, two, yep. three, and four more. And with that, the call goes out. And look who is coming in. Uh, <laughs> Glenn Howard, ready to... <laughs> To make an appearance in an 18th briar, and uh, Glenn, of course, having a, a, a serious small, a snowmobile accident some weeks ago, and uh, then called on his buddy Wayne. Yeah. To draw the button. And he'll throw the lead stones as uh, Tim March will sit down. <laughs> okay, that was adorable, Wayne. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Isn't that great? How's that feel to be back on the ice? It's a dream. Colleen, I, I feel terrible for my friend Glenn that he's not playing full time, but for me personally, it's an absolute it's an absolute dream to be back out there on the ice at the Briar. 
Uh, Wayne, we were talking before the show. We were wondering if you could evaluate uh, Glenn's sweeping this afternoon. <laughs> you know what? That was funny. We talked about that before, and he's like, uh, we we're hoping he'd hold the broom, but the I guess he's not allowed to hold the broom in the house because he was coming in lead or whatever it is, CCA rules that they uh, ask him to do. So uh, so Glenn says, I will comfortably uh, play like Craig Savile used to. I'll throw my two rocks in the top of the forefoot and uh, chirp the other team. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and, of course, Let's face it, your days as a second, you could pick up sweeping any, easy peasy, wouldn't it be? Or maybe not so much? Well, I don't need to go up and down the ice if I don't have to. <laughs> Just remind uh, the, everybody that's uh, in Twitter land and YouTube about your accident. Glenn Howard described his snowmobiling accident combined with your skiing accident. Together, you're making one body. But take us back to the sort of your skiing accident and just how hard the comeback was for you to even figure out how to walk again you know again i couldn't have done it without the support of my family uh, of course sherry was unbelievable <laughs> you you have no idea what she had to deal with with somebody who, who couldn't do very much uh, but yeah i was uh, i was a long time glenn was kind enough to get me out of the house for the briar when i was in a wheelchair just to take me as his coach and uh, but I'll, I'll be the first to say you know what you you hit rock bottom when you're at home and you can't do that much and uh, you know what? I got that opportunity to coach Team Hasselberg, and uh, and they really rejuvenated my love for curling. Yeah, tell me about that, Wayne, because I watched your your post game interview the other day, and I thought you were so articulate about about what they did for you and reminding you that you are a curler. It's in your blood. This is what you're meant to be doing. Yeah, like that. It's that simple. Is uh, they made me feel very at home amongst the team, but at home in the environment. And the more time I spent with them and the more time I spent in curling clubs with them, I realized this this is where I belong. This is a big part of who I am. And uh, you know what? I really missed it. And uh, it, it took me from, you know, just trying to learn how to walk again to trying to learn how to curl again and do everything I wanted to do. And not just for them, but for my entire family. I love doing stuff with my girls, uh, Kelly and Emily. It's great that uh, we get to do a lot of things together. And uh, you know what? Like I say, and, and again, it was Team Hasselberg that made that big difference to push me over the edge. Let me just talk about your girls because they're curlers. And which one, Kelly or Emily, was going to even come down and play out in Nova Scotia this year? And it looked like we were going to have a provincial, and we didn't. And they Colin, were going to play out of here. Didn't she play against you or play against one of your family members? She did come down and play out of Nova Scotia in a few spiels this year. I thought I thought I heard from it Sherry. Been that, me. Yeah. And then it would have been me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There you go. Okay. So, but that must be exciting to watch them. It is unbelievably exciting. It's, uh, it's very hard to be a parent and stand behind the glass. And, uh, and I've coached both of them and they, they find me entertaining as their coach. Cause I do not say a word. I literally sit behind the glass. Don't say a word. Don't do anything. <laughs> it's, it's fully entertaining. Awesome. Um, Wayne, you're, you're back at the briar. How does it feel? I mean, you're, it's such a different scenario in the midst of a pandemic and everything going on, but how does it feel to be back with the stakes so high playing meaningful games? Well, like everybody, I'm grateful to have the opportunity, not just for my own health, but for the COVID and everything else that we've lived through. Um, I really miss the fans and I miss that part of the, the social side of the briar. Everybody knows I'm not afraid to have a cocktail at any time. And uh, I really miss that part of it. Uh, you know, the people you meet in the patch at midnight are some of the funnest people in the world. And I've made some lifelong friends through curling and through briar patches and everything else to the point where I met my wife uh, late at night uh, having a cocktail one time. So, you know what, I have nothing but good things to say about the game. And uh, that's one of the big things that I love about it. Well, it's why we started that curling show. It's, <laughs> you know, we know that the fans really want this. Uh, they already know your Twitter account, so they've seen your cocktail. Let's bring Sherry Madaw in now. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. What's that behind you? Speaking of cocktails, it's a champagne bottle. <laughs> there we go. How are you? We're good. We're good. Sherry, did you teach Wayne everything he knows? <laughs> I'm not sure what I told him. I try. I what I taught him maybe a little bit of patience, maybe a little bit of empathy, but uh, no, he's his own guy. Awesome. I want to, so Wayne, you were just telling us you met through curling. What's the story, you two? Long time. We were uh, up in Thunder Bay at the uh, 
the uh, heart to heart skills, which I'm sure Pauline's been up to a couple times. Mm -hmm. You know, do, giving back a little bit for curling, and uh, Sherry was there as a as a Scotty participant. I was as a fire player, and uh, we just crossed paths, and here we are, 24 years later. <laughs> Isn't that awesome. nice, awesome. Sherry? What were you going to tell Wayne about the experience inside the bubble that kind of helped their team? Uh, it was just about being organized, which I know we as women tend to be a little bit more organized than men. I said it's all about making sure that you eat, you get well rested, but it was it was one of those that you just have to adapt, right? Be flexible and anything goes, the rules change, protocols change, but you just you just have to relax. Like there's some personalities that probably couldn't handle the bubble, but it's just all about and curlers are great, right? Like you eat, curl, sleep, mm -hmm. all good. Yeah, and Wayne, did you take her advice? Uh, we, I'm probably on a different diet plan than we suggested, <laughs> but uh, you know what? I, I did take a lot of her advice. I'm, I'm very good at the downtime. Uh, I'm probably a snapper, so I can put in the time. <laughs> I personally could win a gold medal in napping. But how are the two greatest curlers, husband wife? I'm going to dub you that the curling royal husband wife adapt to coaching and Wayne how has that helped you now back at the Briars? You know what I, Glenn and I talk a lot about this and it, and it gives you a, a view where you can actually see the game better it's almost like a 500 view and you don't think about releases you don't think about all the other things because you just think about the strategy and the shots and what you want to happen next 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 and you know hopefully as we uh, start to wade into the deep end of the pool here at the Briar that uh, I can still take some of that coaching and put it out on the ice. Sherry, what about for you? Oh, that's exactly it. Um, you try and take care of the little details so that the team can actually focus on the things on the ice. So I enjoy that part of it because I'm very organized. I'm I'm kind of like a control freak. So that was great. Organizing the schedule, the daily activities, making sure that you know once they get off the ice that they just go back to the room. We make sure that there's something to eat. So. Like Wayne says, it's very simple. Like we're there to help out just to make sure that they can focus on their task at hand. And and it is, it's fantastic. And it's it's very self-serving because even though that we're not curling competitively anymore, it's it's the way to kind of stay in touch with the sport and the people, which are fantastic. Beautiful. Sherry, what's it like to be watching Wayne back at the Briar? <laughs> well, um, looking forward to watching him on TV tomorrow. We've only seen a bit of the highlights and then making sure that we see the line scores. And so it's it's exciting because um, I know us, you know, and the girls are so excited that that Wayne is back, you know, unfortunately for, for Glenn, but we're we're excited and very proud of Wayne. It's sort of, sort of a Cinderella story is not the wrong thing, but then you're getting to go back to the ball, Wayne. Yeah. Um, even Glenn was excited about it. <laughs> It's it's been unbelievable. Like I say, I feel still I feel sorry for Glenn because he he loves it as much as I do. But for me, it's like I say, somebody knocked on your door and said, uh, "Here, I'm going to put your dream right in front of you." And, and, and there you are. So, hey, Go ahead, Devin. Producer Sylvia, I think we have a bunch of photos of Sherry M. Wayne over the years. Can we show some of those? You guys have been doing this for a while. Some awesome photos. Maybe Sherry M. Wayne, if you can take us through some of the memories you guys have been on the ice and in so many wonderful battles as we look at some of these photos. What sort of stands out to the both of you over all the years? Sherry, go ahead. I, I would say you look the same. Maybe a few more gray hairs right now, but that slide looks pretty amazing. Yeah, look good. <laughs> you know what? I just think of the memories I have, the teammates, my immediate thought is the teammates that I've played with, you know, like Lang and Savel there and, uh, and you know, Pete Corner back in the day. And of course, Russ Howard, who uh, does the TSN feed. And then back to my team with Graham and, uh, and Ted and Scott Bid. I have lifelong friends through curling, relationship with, again, Sherry through curling. Again, it, it's who I am. I'm a curler, and it's given me everything in my life. Oh, that is so nice. I often feel that way, too. Listen, you mentioned the deep end of the pool you got to dive in, so I thought I should do the board just for you, just to look at who you got still ahead. How I know. Are you totally, like, what would you be telling Anna Hasselberg that don't worry, Anna, you're playing Canada tomorrow, or, you know, whatever? How do you approach? Who do we have first? <laughs> well, we got that uh, that Botcher guy tomorrow who's been uh, pretty good in these Briar things the last few years. So, you know what? We'll go. Well, we'll take it a bit of time to draw the button first, and then we'll uh, wait for the work, work the box stop, and we'll go around it. 
I know so you've got a 15 or 18 inch titanium rod and you're like, how does that affect your throw? Uh, my ankle doesn't quite work the way it used to, so I can't quite turn my foot out as much and uh, my knee doesn't bend quite as much where the ash spots, but uh, you know what, it's a little bit sore tight at the end of the day, but you know, here I am, I can still get it to the other end and rock online and make shots. Awesome. Uh, Sherry, I was bringing to Colleen and uh, reminding to Colleen that all great things go through Saskatchewan, yeah. Rosetown, Rosetown, Saskatchewan. Let's look at some of your moments over the years. And, and maybe Wayne and Sherry will get you to talk about some of Sherry's great moments because, Sherry, you've, uh, you've done it for years as well. It's a great thing, the longevity in the sport and the fact that we're able to do it. And um, I'm still not, oh, my God. Hairstyles certainly change, don't they, Colleen? Uh, I'd say you haven't aged, Sherry, <laughs> for one thing. But, you know, the, the wonderful thing about Sh um, Sherry as a competitor was I can talk about her, can't I? Because I played against you a fair bit, Sherry, through the years. And um, she had fire and grace at the same time. She Aww. was a really enjoyable player to play against. And I even remember playing against you when you were wearing the green of Saskatchewan. That's right, up in Thunder Bay in 1996. That was an incredible tiebreaker scenario. I think I started at 6.30 in the morning against Heather Houston, but were you in the tiebreaker that year too, Sherry? Uh, we were not, we oh. missed that, yeah. Okay. Well, you didn't miss anything. Any other <laughs> about Wayne's World, so why are we talking about our Scottish, Sherry? <laughs> it's Wayne. Listen, we hope we wish you the best of luck. Uh, Thank you. It's such a such a wonderful, wonderful story. The curling world in Canada has missed you, Mr. Madaw. Thank and, you. So nice to have you back. And, and I know Glenn feels the same way too that you're taking the helm of the helm of the ship. Keep it between the lines, okay? Okay. Keep it simple, stupid. The kiss strategy. You probably give that to Anna half. <laughs> okay. Great to see you both. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I can't wait to see you go a high, hard one. How fast? Uh, seven and a half is pretty easy. Okay. So if, if I can ramp it up to six and a half if I want still, but I, I try not to. Okay. <laughs> awesome to see you both. Sherry, thanks for making time for us. I'm still wondering about all those wine bottles behind you. <laughs> Another day. Oh, another day. Okay, tomorrow show we'll book you again. Yeah. Wayne's World Show continue part two. Good luck tomorrow. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great show. Thanks, Thank Wayne. You. Look, we just we had Wayne as just one word, and he's like Madonna and Cher. No, I, 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 no, I noticed that it was yeah. Wayne. Everybody knows who you're talking about when you say Wayne's back. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. And you know what? It is. To me, I mean, you just wish them all the all the best. Uh, first off, Glenn is such a class guy and team, and he's beloved. Uh, his longevity, I always love a good longevity story. You know that because- Because you're why? still here. You're still yeah. here. And, and both of them have been through these horrific accidents and their perseverance, I think. Right. Right. In some ways, it almost makes curling, uh, the stress of a curling game seem easy. Right. after what they've both been through. So I hope they have a little bit of that. And when you say that, Colleen, I even think back to what Brad shared last night after his fall and his hip injury. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a different perspective. You see the game, you appreciate the game differently, don't you? No kidding. Yeah, I think we, we've seen that with, with women too after they've become mothers, that suddenly right. the focus is now uh, more on the baby, still appreciating the game, still combining right. both. But their prior the priorities, while well, they still want to win, it's not the be all and end all. Not anyway, okay. To them. Fan portion. And, oh, and yeah. earlier today, we got an awesome tweet mm -hmm. out of London, Ontario, because we're all trying to cheer on the teams, watch the teams, be a part of the Briar experience. And how about this? We're gonna go to Laura in London, Ontario. We're gonna bring her in right now. Recently engaged to the skipper of Nova Scotia now, Scott McDonald, and Laura is here. Good evening to you, Laura, and look at the shrine you've got in the background. Hi, Colleen, hi, Devin, how are you? Hi, Laura. Nice to have you with us. I do, lo I loved your shrine right, right away because there you are in Ontario and you've got Go Team Nova Scotia. What are your neighbors thinking of this uh, shrine you've made to Nova Scotia? 
Well, um, Scott and I recently moved to the neighborhood. We're actually in St. Thomas. We're not in London anymore. So mm -hmm. I think our neighbors now know we're a little curling obsessed, but hey, that's fine. <laughs> awesome. How long did it take you to build that? Um, I would say a good five hours. I mean, in Ontario, we're moving, we moved back to the orange zone. So we're allowed to have a few more people indoors. Um, so I, I thankfully had the help of both of my parents to build this, but still took quite some time. And, and you tweeted out the awesome photo. Thank you for that, Laura. It obviously traveled really well. But look at this, future Mrs. McDonald watching the game. Here you are. What's it like? I mean, now you're now you're cheering for Scott and you, you mobilize quickly to get the Nova Scotia colors. Yeah, um, well, it's been such a challenging year and it's obviously, it's amazing that all these athletes get to compete um, in the sport that they love, but it's heartbreaking for the fans and the family that we can't be there. Um, and I'm, I'm sure the, the players are feeling it as well. So my thought was, how can I, you know, find ways to cheer from afar? So thankfully the people at, the lovely people at Dynasty helped me create this nice jersey um, and my family helped me build this display. So hopefully- and now you have a wedding dress i mean why would you that's your wedding dress right there don't well, you think just walk up the aisle well we haven't done engagement photos so i don't think he now has a matching shirt so we don't have to go shopping right <laughs> practical of you laura i love that by the way um mcdonald is my mother's maiden name and everybody you know she, her mcdonald runs deep in our bones coming over from scotland so except for the spelling error of mc instead of mac you know your very Nova Scotian name that you're marrying into, just so you know. So hope you feel right at home as a blue noser. Well, yeah, half my family's from Nova Scotia, so they're pretty excited. Oh, I didn't know that. What part? <laughs> I digress. I have family in Halifax, Truro, pretty oh. little spread up all, of, all over Nova Scotia. Oh, so this cheering for Nova Scotia comes easy. What was it like when Scott got the call? Yeah. Um, I mean, we were just going, uh, we just got engaged and then I think gears shifted pretty quickly to the briar, but it was still very exciting. Um, we're all really happy that he gets the opportunity to be there. And I know my dad was really excited that uh, he was playing for the Blue Nose. So, so. so do, you think, do you think the family was more excited about the briar or the engagement? You can be honest. I think we all know the answer here. <laughs> for sure, the briar. I get it. But listen, tell me about the wedding and COVID right. time. When's that going to happen? Um, we haven't really given it much thought, to be honest. I don't think we want to be part of the club that has to reschedule two or three mm -hmm. times. So I think we're just going to wait it out for now. Listen, you've been busy building a whole window shrine. I mean, I've had to build a curling set and whiteboard, so I get it. It takes a lot. Well, what, I mean, what do you have all yeah. out there? What do you have all in the shrine? Uh, we have a few kilts. We have some curling shoes. There are a few lobsters kicking back there. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of corn brooms. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's awesome. That's it's awesome. so good. Now, what advice are you giving to uh, Mr. McDonald there, future Mr. Husband, <laughs> as he gets ready for the next games? Stay focused. Get out of your head. And let's do a little less talking. That clock scared me last game. Oh, yes. Because he had to rush one of his shots. Was it the ninth end? He had a chance. Did he have a chance for three in the ninth? Am I remembering the right game? I think it was two, but yes. Yeah. Just two. Less talking. Stay focused. <laughs> yeah. That clock. Honestly, I hate that with the clock, eh? You think you're doing okay for time, and then you look and you go, oh, oh we've got two minutes to play the last end. Hurry up. We don't have any nails left to bite, so if we can just play an easier game. Okay, where's the dog? We love a good dog. <laughs> I knew it. I knew exactly what you were going to do, Colleen. Oh, my lobster dog. <laughs> oh my God, so cute. Okay, this is my now my favorite thing. On the <laughs> oh no, this is outstanding. Tell us about the dog. Colleen wants to know all about the dog. This is uh, this is our dog, Willis. He is uh, upset that you didn't ask to speak with him tonight. So he okay. just put his two words in here uh, to get on camera. <laughs> what did you say the dog's name is? Willis. Willis, okay. Listen, for goodness sakes, don't put him in the pot and boil him. <laughs> Devin and I have talked a lot about lobster lately. We can't wait to come to your wedding. Right, Deb? Yeah, are we invited? Yeah, we Absolutely. I'm sure, I'm sure Laura and Scott are going to invite us and their dog. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, gosh. I'm so happy you joined us tonight. What a window. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Laura. Take care. Thank Good to see you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.
<laughs> St. Thomas in London used to put on the best women's spiel. So back there, back in the day, that was an annual trip up there. And they, they were so fabulous. Great hospitality. I mean, we've got to give Laura a lot of credit. Willis in a lobster dog outfit. I didn't even know this. She, she has just raised the bar for the fan section of the show, I think. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay, listen. We've got to keep this moving. What a huge night. What a huge game tonight. Cooey versus Gushu. We know how much people love that battle. We're going to be ready for it. But today we started the day, Colleen, talking about the best Briar finishes ever. Yeah. And I was telling you, you know, what's your favorite Briar win of all time? My first ever CBC internship, mm -hmm. 2004 in my hometown of Saskatoon. I'm on the media bench with a hardwired phone. Back in the day. Into CB, back in the day. Phoning into CBC radio, giving live updates of the final, Daisy versus Furby in that thrilling finish. And I'm there and I'm thinking, this curling thing, what a dramatic thing this is. This is how it always is gonna go, right? Because of how good it was. I know you remember it. It was such a thrill. Let's yeah. look at the highlights and then we're gonna chat with Mark Dacey who was wow. in the center of it all. But let's watch the highlights from that memorable 2004. Good as he flashed this one, yes. You said that it was straight there, Mike, and that was the danger. We got compromise what Mark Daisy is missing right now. He needs to turn it around. With the final stone of end number six. Can he save a shooter here? Yes, he pushes that stone cleanly through. There's a spectator behind the sheet that is yelling every time. Nedowin gets set to throw a stone. One more word in your mind. Nedowin's final stone. Does the dream of four remain alive? Wide and heavy. Oh, no. The comeback. Drop the three. Win it right here for Nova Scotia. A chance to end the three-year run of the Randy Furby rank. Is he there? They have to get a piece of the floor. Three brushes working frantically. It looks good. He's got it. reacting mark daisy's with us hey guys how's it going it's so awesome. i mean when you look at that again are you like whoa <laughs> well you know the first thing is uh, uh it looks like television was uh, less than 1k back then <laughs> and uh all hair brooms for us uh, no directional sweeping uh, so, uh, you know, very, very different game, uh, then, uh, from now, but, uh, still, uh, lots of, uh, lots of drama in that game. I was, I was playing pretty lousy up until about the eighth end. And then, uh, all of a sudden I made a few shots and, and, uh, look what happens when you make shots. Wow. Mark, it's great to see you. Uh, like I was just saying, that's, that was my first CBC assignment. You said it dramatic. I thought, Hey, this is how every curling game goes. But Colleen and I were talking before the show about how that final end developed. It's a shot that people still refer to about coming around with a rock in the top eight. Can you walk us through how that end developed? I think Bruce maybe made the call or tell us how that unfolded. Well, the first two rocks thrown by Marcel, um, the first one didn't get as deep as they had hoped. They wanted uh, top four and they got a bite of the top four. And then the second one um, was meant to come down and maybe tap it up a little bit. And instead it, it came just short of it and, and didn't line up straight. It got a, a little bit off offline. So it was kind of cornered, but never actually moved it. And ironically, those two rocks never moved again the entire end. A lot of rocks breezed by them. Uh, but they never got touched again. And from the moment that those two rocks stopped, I thought, I kind of thought, I wonder if we could use those as, as overlapping guards, if we could ever get to that point. 
And uh, Bruce's first one, I had to play a wide out turn, come around the corner guard. So I didn't disturb those two stones to get them to peel the guard so that we could get around those two. Um, it wasn't exactly as I had envisioned, but um, Bruce made two amazing shots that uh, set us up for a sure two, a sure chance for two. And then, um, you know, when the opportunity for three presented itself, it was like, geez, do we take this chance? Uh, possibly lose the game, but possibly win the game too. And um, and it all worked out, of course. Wow. What was Robert Harris's famous quote? Did he not say, if you do this, we win the briar? <laughs> well, Rob wanted me to play the outturn freeze on the one that, um, uh, on my first shot. So Bruce had made this amazing come around to the tee line behind two rocks that were staggered in the top eight foot. And Rob wanted me to follow it and freeze right to it. And, and Bruce wanted to either play the intern or go open side. And I was thinking a little bit that way too. And Rob said, let's label it right here. And Bruce said, I think we don't need to play that difficult a shot. And Rob interrupted him when he said, we don't need to. And Rob said, we don't need to what? Don't need to win the briar. <laughs> and uh, he's like, no, no, we just don't need to be that difficult with our shot. And, uh, but, uh, you know, we, you know, Colleen you and I both know uh, with Rob and the Harris boys, sometimes uh, they get they get pretty antsy and high strung. And so you got to turn the uh, intensity meter down a notch or two. Yeah, but it was still one of the best sound ups other than Marcel in that end telling the fan that they were going to get them. Um, uh, it was one of the best sound ups in a Briar final. Yeah. You know, it's just it was pretty so good. Lovely. <laughs> we often talk, you know, we were had Brad on the other day, who's your business partner, of course, at Orange right. Free Fitness. Yeah. Those guys, Deb, they, they, uh, between Brad and Mark and uh, at Nichols and, and Mark Daisy, they're, I'm sure their abs are not a six pack, they're probably like a 400 pack, you know, I'm thinking. I'm but, not going to show, I'm not showing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But we, we won't ask, we weren't going to ask. But um, we talk about Brad winning in St. John's, but you you being a Saskatchewan, I mean, I know Devin was going to bring it up, but I'm going to bring it up. Saskatchewan. What was it like for you to win at home? Well, the, the 2003 final was in Halifax, um, which is my hometown now, and then the 2004 to go to Saskatoon. I, I, I really felt like I was the home team two years in a row, um, and uh, that uh, was very unique. Uh, the Halifax final was was very much about um um you know rob and bruce and andrew and, and and peter and matt and their family and friends and everybody around and and of course um you know i had some family around but not as much but when we went to saskatoon i had all my family there and all my school friends and everything and and that felt so much more to me like like i was curling at home than 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 in halifax and um i i know i um the morning of the final, we, we stayed at the Sheraton Hotel, but we, we had breakfast, um, Heather and I, and, and my son Ty was four months old at the time. Uh, we had breakfast at the, at the Besborough Hotel, which is the famous castle right on the waterfront uh, in Saskatoon. And uh, I remember sitting there having breakfast, and, and Ty was as calm as could be in his stroller, staring at a ceiling fan. And, and there was a real calmness about the whole thing. And I, and I said to Heather at breakfast that um, I, I really feel like, you know, this is meant to happen. This was this is destiny. And uh, then I also remember after the seventh end when it was eight four, I was like, this isn't the destiny I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mark, I've, we call it SAS Place still because that's how we remember it. It's been renamed a number of times. But out of all the times I've been there, I, it was deafening when you made that shot, that that celebration. I've been to a lot of big events. I don't know if I've ever heard it that loud. It, people were in hysterics when you watch that. It was it was really a great moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my my uh, my dad jumped the boards. Uh, and so security basically stopped everybody, but everybody in Saskatoon knew my father. <laughs> and, and I said, oh, it's, it's Mark's dad, let him go. So he made it out to center ice and uh, and that embrace with my father after was probably the most uh, one of the most special moments in my life. Oh, Mark, you've never made me cry, but I'm about to. Listen, when you watch Wayne Madaw and Glenn Howard there, do you get hungry to do this again? Because I mean, you're fit as a fiddle. Oh God, um, no, not really. <laughs> I mean, my kids, my kids curl, so I love watching them, and I live vicariously uh, through them, but. Uh, you know, the amount of time and effort and, and 
it used to be uh, if I shot an 85 to 90 percent game, I felt pretty good about it. Now I feel pretty crappy. Uh, you know, you gotta. What happened to those 10 to 15 percent that you missed? I mean, now these guys are just so good. They're they're, they're ridiculously good, and uh, the conditions they play in, uh, the, the the brooms they use, the the information they have when they when they play their shots. Um, it's it's so scientific now and so perfect almost. Um, I can't even imagine curling at a level where 95% is the average uh, when you're shooting. Although it hasn't been so far this week, but I, I'm right. sure COVID and, uh, and rust have a little bit to do with that. You throw the rock so well, and with those magic brooms now and the ice conditions, yeah. uh, you know, you'd be amazing. But listen, I was already asking you earlier today about what, your, what, what were your favorite briars, and you had two. So tell us about the two, because we've got uh, one of them. Yeah, I watched uh, Briar Finals right from the time I was a kid. And so 1980 was the first one with Rick Folk. Uh, that's when full games were televised. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, Al Hackner, when he made the double, uh, is that 88? Am I in the right year there? Um, when he made the double in the 10th and to score two and send it to the extra. Uh, you know, what a moment, what a shot. Um, you know, Pat Ryan had made a little hit and roll in on his last one in 10. And, and kind of swung his broom as if he had won. He was uh, he was pretty smiling, pretty good. Everybody was great shot. You know, it's over. And then Hackner had a little trick up his sleeve. And then Ryan's team hadn't given up a steal the entire briar, not one single end stolen on them. And then the last end, the extra end of the final, was their first steal against them uh, by only by an inch or two uh, on the draw to the side of the four. So that one blows me away. But uh, a couple of years later, um, uh, when uh, Pat Ryan or was playing Eugene Ritzuk in the 10th and Eugene was two up coming home and uh, uh, no free guard zone back then either. And they just couldn't get any peels happening and uh, they couldn't keep it clean. And Ryan got it mixed up and got his two going. Then he had his three going and Eugene was trying to freeze on his last rock and it picked something up and hogged and uh, mm -hmm. score three without even throwing your last one. That's uh, that yeah. very often. Uh, yeah. But I would agree, since they started having finals, it was your comeback and also the Hackner uh, double, right, Deb? Yeah, and let's watch it right now. We got it. It was 1985. We have the Hackner double. Let's take a look right now. He has left Al Hackner with an almost impossible situation. Probable odds of 1,000 to 1. And the only shot Hackner has is a thin double. On the shot stone on the left, rolling over to catch the other one at the back. He needs it for two and a tie. But not many in this Coliseum give Al Hackner much of a chance to make the shot he's going for. But the Iceman has impressed people before, and the Iceman can never be discounted. Hackner sends it on its way. A last desperate attempt to force an extra end. Well by the guard, and it begins to make its move. Contact with one, a collision with another, and Hackner has made a shot that will be remembered long in Briar history to produce a tie after regulation play. Alan Hackner has the crowd in Moncton on its feet roaring. The rock begins to move toward the center line. It'll come in a little deeper than Hackner wanted. But one quarter covered, it's a problem for Ryan. Sweeper staying very close, but staying off it, just brushing lightly. Midway down, they realize the rock's got a good head of steam. It's not digging in. The rock is hanging out. He needs a corner of the forefoot. He slides back, back, back too far. He leaves Hackner with the rock at the top of the forefoot to win the Canadian Men's Curling Championship. Wow. Yeah. And wow. first, that's Right, Furby was the third there for Pat Ryan, wasn't he? Yep. Yeah, so it's two tough Briar final losses that <laughs> Furby had to go through. Listen, nice to see you, my friend. You too, Colleen. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen you around the rink much, but of course we're not allowed to go on the rink very much these days. Well, we can go a little bit, but what am I practicing for? If you're not practicing, why am I practicing? Uh, you know, it's like riding a bike. I could get back on any time, but uh, too busy. Oh, yeah. theory. That's what Wayne Madaw is saying to himself. It's like riding a bike. Yeah, yeah. Well, Wayne's a classic. Uh, you know, he'll uh, he'll he'll be there at the end of the week. We all know that. Yeah. 
You know, the funny thing about watching um, the Hackner double, you might remember when Burtnick won the Briar here in mm -hmm. Halifax. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that yeah. Was, uh, looked like it was a Hackner win all day. They had the best hairdos back then, too. Like, that uh, was a good one. Flowing lots, hockey air. Yeah, fun times. Awesome. All right, nice seeing you, Mark. Good to see you, Mark. You too, Devin. Take care. Good to see you. Bye. I do love watching Mark's the finale of that one because it was improbable and against all odds. I, I get goosebumps every time I watch it because I'm literally back in my media seat watching that. I can see it. It was such an awesome moment. And, and here we are. And here we are. Drama started for you. No wonder I love the drama, right? Okay, we got to wrap it up here, but what a great finish we have here. New Brunswick, two and one at the Briar. We have skipper James Gratton. 14th Briar appearance. So glad to have him on, on the, the show, show tonight. tonight. Really really is. Is. How, are, How you? are you? How are you? you? Um, uh, so far, so good. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, glad to be doing something uh, uh, with competitive curling for a while. I haven't been uh, doing anything like that since last year's Briar. But uh, so it's nice to be here. Uh, we lost a tough one there this afternoon, but we'd like to have back. But you always leave a few on the table. and. Uh, I guess that's normal, but uh, we're just going to push on. Tell us why. I like hearing I like hearing Well, what was that? I, I just lost you there a little bit. Tell me why you like the extra. Who played the extra? Who played the yeah, it was a it was a little bit tough. We hadn't played that path a lot. I think if I had seen that draw a little bit more, I probably would have. Uh, and it was on the tee line, so I knew I had to move it anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, and I just saw Brandon's uh, just whistle whistle by the guard the shot before that. So uh, I thought if I could just roll an inch or two and just um, give him a little tougher look, uh, considering uh, we were both kind of flirting with that guard uh, most of the game, I thought it would have given us a pretty good chance. James, James. And I have talked a lot about the uh, have talked a lot about the ice conditions. How are you seeing it? Where do you put the broom? It looks like everybody's still trying to figure it out. Yeah, so today's game was a little bit uh, easier. We played our first game; the ice was just perfect. I thought, and, and uh, we played uh, Jim Cotter last night. Uh, the ice got I felt a little bit softer. It was a little bit more confusing, and all the I think both of our teams were struggling trying to get a handle on it. But uh, today was back to uh, back to where it was the first day, and uh, I felt very comfortable with draw weight. Seems to be holding up. Uh, the center doesn't seem to be breaking down. I know we watched the Scotties a little bit. It seemed to had uh, a little struggle with that, and then when they went wide, it was a little bit uh, like a highway out there. So. Uh, but uh, apart from that, the draw weight seems to be steady right across the sheet. And uh, I think for me, uh, that, that's that's all that matters. Uh, what do you prepare for? Now, how do you kind of park this game and now move on? Because at two and one, I'm just going to show my exciting graphics. You're right in the thick of things in your pool. <laughs> that's a nice chart. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, for me, I'm from the Maritime, so what I'm going to do is uh, have dinner, I'm going to have a beer, and uh, I think that's the best way for me to move on. Uh, not too many, just enough to kind of, uh, we'll chat it out and get through it. Uh, I think we guessed that in the car after that game, we realized that we all uh, across the board kind of left a few shots on the table that we'd like to have back. But uh, you're playing one of the best teams in the world, and we realize that you just can't do that. So um, uh, we're going to vow not to do that again. and. Uh, I think our first game against McEwen, obviously, we laid it all out there. and We tried to go out there and be a little bit aggressive because we figured they'd be a little shaky after the year off that uh, everybody's had this year. And I think that strategy worked in the first game. And I think we got to get back to that. James, you just said it. You're from the Maritimes. You're coming in here, your 14th Briar appearance, and you're right in the heart of it. I think it was, Colleen, maybe you can help me with this. I think it was Glenn who said, Watch out for New Brunswick. I mean, these guys are going to be in the heart of it. When you look at the field, you look at where you are. You know, sometimes people say, well, what about this New Brunswick team? How do you feel about your team going into this? Because you're two and one. You're right. You're right in the heart of this thing. I think uh, coming in here, I felt more confident than I have in other Briars. I, I can honestly say that. I think we were able to uh, take these last a couple of months and focus on preparing for the Briar and not necessarily preparing for our tanker and then having two or three weeks to get ready for the briar. Like the last two months we've had uh, some ice makers at home and a few different clubs in our area that have been just fantastic for it. They've come up and did uh, textured the ice for us, just like we would see here this week. And traditionally we wouldn't have that much time to kind of do that. So I think uh, 
preparation wise, we were um, even better off than most years. And uh, the only kind of quirk was we had to find a new third. Uh, uh, Paul doing Paul Dobson's our normal third couldn't do it with the COVID restrictions of just like uh, so many people. But uh, we added a, a guy that we were familiar with that we thought we'd fit in with our team uh, as much as we uh, ended as much as we could. And he's been it's been seamless so far. It's been amazing how he's fit in and, uh, and added to our team. Remind me his name and how has that gone so seamlessly for you? I, I get it. Yeah, no, it's Jonathan Buke. He actually plays uh, third for uh, Scott McDonald's team, who you uh, had, I think you had Scott's wife on earlier there. So um, he's, I think it's just personality wise. He's uh, just kind of fits in. He kind of uh, lets me kind of uh, uh, go with the strategy of the team. And I'm holding the broom for, for at least two of the guys that I'm familiar with. And he's just so technically perfect that, uh, I'm able to put the broom down and uh, know what I'm getting every time. And I think uh, I think you know yourself when you're grabbing a new player and if they're a little bit art artistic with the release and the slide and that sort of thing, it can kind of get hard to get used to somebody, but he's pretty technically sound, so it makes my life easy. Okay, James, not to be snoopy, but is that artwork on the bed behind you there? Or what, what do you got? It looks like you might have some drawings up there. Not to be snoopy, but we're getting a look at yeah, everything. We're snoopy, we're snoopy, we're snoopy here. <laughs> No, I got like two or three junior teams at home that have uh, that sent some. Uh, I actually opened my bag when I got here and we found a little folder. I think my wife had kind of collected some from some junior teams at home. So uh, shout out to Team Tracy and uh, some little rockers at the at the gauge and uh, my home club. So it's been great. I had to put them up right away. And I have a couple more boards here, too, with also some support letters. So it's nice to come off when you come off a little tough, little loss. You kind of come back and read these things and uh, it kind of puts it in perspective for me. Yeah. Yeah. That is so nice. Well, we wish you all the best going forward. Who do you have tomorrow, by the way? Uh, Brad Jacobs tomorrow. So oh, I think, uh, yeah, I think this is a tough spiel, eh? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very tough spiel. Very tough spiel. Do you remember in the junior days and you'd be like everybody, you'd be just so excited to win and you'd get the prize table at the end? Yeah, you know, <laughs> Oh, I remember that. This is my 14th prior, so I'm uh, that, that that just means I'm old too, right? <laughs> so Yeah, yeah. Awesome. No, I mean no, you're not. What do I mean? That sounded bad when I said yes. Well, actually, I think I think we do have some some photos, James, of you over the years. You haven't aged a bit. Sophie, can we bring those up? I think I mean look at this. That's right, That's right. <laughs> there you go. Was were you was curling? <laughs> Uh, yeah, according to those pictures, I think I was curling with Russ back then. Yeah, I think I played my first. Yeah, my first prior was 1997. I was skipping, and then uh, took a few years uh, myself, and then I I played with Russ for the first my next I think five uh, full five briars. Mm -hmm. So and then uh, skipped. I've been skipping ever since. But you gotta you gotta put all of that knowledge and suck suck as much knowledge out of that guy as I could and try to uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah try to implement. He is sort of encyclopedia, and the way he. The way he passes on the knowledge is is um, in a really nice way, right? Without yeah, making I mean, him like a total idiot. But what was the most important thing Russ taught you? Uh, I think it's the intensity thing. Uh, I think we can all anybody that's even come around Russ is on, on a curling ice, even when you're throwing rocks and practicing. Uh, the intensity level is just off the charts. And I think I up until those years I played with Russ, I took it a little bit too lackadaisical and didn't uh, maybe invest some mental energy into that practice uh, routine as I should. And uh, coming out of those years, I the uh, intensity around practice, around matching rocks and, and just uh, taking the event seriously from start to finish, uh, he was a master at that. So uh, I think the, I, I think that's the most important thing that, that's impacted my game since I've, uh, in those years I played with him. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. He did a great job around the Maritimes when he was living in New Brunswick of sharing the knowledge and helping whoever asked. So, so much respect for him for that. But James, lots of luck going forward. We're so glad to have New Brunswick on. Thank yeah, you. there you go. Yeah, we'll see if we can uh, knock off a few more there this week and, uh, and maybe chat with you later. Yeah, yeah. Keep it going. Awesome. Keep going. Thanks for being on, James. Good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thanks, Devin. Thanks, Colleen. Have a good one. Nice to see you. Okay, we've got uh, 11 minutes to this massive game tonight. I don't know. you got to bring a board out. We're close. We're wrapping it up. Um, okay, I'm trying to get the board work done early. Yeah, Guju undefeated, Kui undefeated. Uh, I what is it now? I think they've played in four of the last five Briar finals. Is that right? I think I don't, I, I don't have the exact number, but you're right. 
this has been like a running soap opera in Briarland. It has. Yeah. Um, between them, let's count how many. Do they vote four? Is it seven Briar? Briar titles. Well, 2016, Kui won. 2017, when they played in the final, 2017, Gushu won between the two of them. 2018 is when Gushu defeated Botcher. Oh, no, I guess Kui, oh. uh, it was Botcher and Gushu, but then they played again. Uh, like a walking encyclopedia. I mean, but, yeah, that's obviously the huge match right there. Right. Uh, Cooey at three and zero, oh, and uh, we've got to we got to get Benny Bear on, by the way. Well, um, I've talked to him. I'm planning. I'm loving how Fournier is playing. Right. I think they're looking really good. Epping Epping against Nunavut. Well, Epping Epping will win that game, but there have been times with Epping that you're going. Uh, Maybe not lucky to win that one, but lucky to win that one. Well, no, they were lucky to beat Saskatchewan. I think they'll be the, we, we talked about it last night, but they were lucky. And then they were in a in a roller coaster of a game earlier today. So, but you know, you know more than anyone, you got to get those lucky wins on the course of this long haul to the championship. Yeah, there are, you need a few lucky breaks for sure. So he might've had those already. I'll tell you what we've heard over and over again for this Briars, the field, whoa. Yeah. So amazing. So and and just to that point, I was going to just end with that sets up why this game between Kui and Gushu is so crucial, because Mike Harris said it on Twitter that you got to imagine that you're already in the playoffs right now. Right. With the first place going directly to the final, you win this game. You might set your, yourself up for that automatic birth right to the final. Absolutely. And the playoffs now, of course, I know we've been talking about it a lot for the Scotties with only three teams. It makes even this preliminary round just so important and where every game matters. So you're looking at a Gushu Kui tonight going, yeah, that could be the winner of that getting the by the final. So right. we don't go there yet. Right. Um, we're, but we're going there. But we're going there. So put the kettle on in Newfoundland and Labrador out west. Buckle up. Enjoy dinner. Get your snacks. Uh, and I guess we'll see you on Twitter real soon. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow, too. Thanks, producer Sophie. Thank you, Sophie. Good luck. Good night. Good curling. See you soon.